Welcome to the Daily Encouragement from the Metro Church of Christ. I'm Rick Edgman. I would like to share with you a story that I have told a couple of different times, and for those who may have heard this story, uh, I ask for your patience. Many years ago, when I was working with another congregation as a minister, we had arranged for a Saturday breakfast at a local restaurant, and about 35 men gathered together for the breakfast, and as we went into the room and we sat down, a manager and a waitress came in, and the first thing they said was, we apologize because we were not able to get enough waitresses and servers uh, for today, and we'd love to still have you stay. We'll serve you as best we can, but just know it may be a little bit slower than normal. Well, we decided to go ahead and go through with it. We were in no huge hurry. But as time went on, it took a long time to get all the orders taken. It took a longer time to get the food. And when the food came, uh, many of the orders were mixed up. And as all of that was going on, what we found is as a waitress came through and she was trying to fill everybody's cup with coffee, the men started, not all of them, but some of the men started making snide, nasty remarks about her service and how she wasn't very good and how they didn't like it and she wasn't going to get a tip and all those different kinds of things. Well, we went through the breakfast. It took almost an hour longer than it normally would have taken. And the men, not all the men, but some of the men, they were just grumbling and they were talking about how they just hated what was going on. And we all got up. We had been given our, our tickets to go pay at the register. And as we stood in line, we had a man, a man come up and he asked, I would just kind of like to know, can you tell me what church you are affiliated with? And somebody answered and he replied, thank you. I'll be sure to steer clear of you folks. Wow, that, that really really hurt. And then also while we were standing in line, the manager was there at the register. And as we went by and as I went by as a minister, he asked me, are you a minister with this congregation or with this church? And I said, yes, I am. And I started to apologize for the way some of the fellows were acting. But before I even had a chance to say anything, he looked at me and he said, I want you to know, please don't ever come back to my restaurant again. Please do not bring your group. It's not worth it for my servers and my waitresses. That hurt. That was embarrassing. In Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 and 2, Paul the apostle wrote, as a prisoner for the Lord then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. There's a lot of things that can be discussed within that particular verse, but the one thing I'd like to spend a few minutes with today are the two words, be patient. Patience. That's something that we all wish we had more of and something that most of us wish that we wouldn't lose. You know, as in, I lost my patience with that person. Who or what do you lose patience with? Do, do you lose patience with your mate or your children? Maybe you lose patience with your coworker or the people, even the people at church or the young lady at the checkout counter or, or the waitress or maybe you have lost your patience doing your tax return or when your computer doesn't boot up fast enough. Perhaps you're losing your patience with hearing about the COVID-19 virus and losing it over staying at home for the last month and a half trying to deal with everything at home. We have, we've been living in an instant world. We have instant coffee, instant hot chocolate, instant food, instant service at restaurants, instant cures. We want patience from others toward us, but we demand instant satisfaction from them. Do you know 
what I am most impatient with? People who know me would probably say that I am impatient with having a dirty car. My car has just got to be spotless all the time. Others who really, really know me might say that I'm an impatient man when I'm continuing to counsel with people who after months or years still choose not to make a change and to get away from their problems. Do you know who I am most impatient with? I am most impatient with me. I get very impatient and angry at me in so many different ways. I'm impatient with my lack of knowledge on technological and social media. I'm impatient with my lack of speedy spiritual growth. There's a long list of what I am impatient about. But most of all, I'm impatient about my impatience. An old Dutch proverb says, a handful of patience is more than a bushel of brains, worth more than a bushel of brains. Chrysostom, a preacher and author in the fourth century, called patience the queen of virtues. Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8, the end of the matter is better than the beginning, and patience is better than pride. Excuse me, I've got to get a drink of water. But what is patience that we should want it anyway? The Bible uses various synonyms for patience. The Bible uses words like steadfastness, endurance, perseverance, and long-suffering. We should want patience because it gives us life of peace. It gives us comfort. It gives us order. It's the difference between taking the time to show your child how to do something right instead of shoving them aside and saying, can't you get anything right? It's the difference in hearing what a wonderful piece of work that you've put together instead of hearing somebody else say, you can sure tell he didn't put much time into that one. It's the difference in finishing the race or not finishing the race. Second Peter chapter one verse five verses uh, chapter one verse five through eleven tells us that we are to add patience to our lives, because along with moral excellence and knowledge and godliness and love, patience gains for us entrance into the kingdom of God. And you aren't going to gain moral excellence. You're not going to gain knowledge and love unless you practice patience. They're all a process that takes time and patience. But how do we, how do I, become a patient person? You know, some people seem to have a natural inclination to be very patient. But others of us have to work our way into it. And I'm that kind of person. Patience is a learned virtue for many of us, and it takes time and effort. To become patient, we have to be intentional about it. And I have four suggestions for it. Number one, we may have to do the old count to ten before you say or do anything in response. Take that count of 10 before you jump into something. Number two, be intentional about taking time to read God's word and constantly strive to live his instructions about how to be his person in a world of impatience. Number three, find someone to whom you can be accountable and have them be honest with you about your patience or your impatience. And number four, one thing is for sure, pray about patience. Even though that might be scary, because God may allow something to test your patience. I could go on for the next hour about patience. I've gone on way too long already, but I don't know that there would be many of you who would have enough patience to listen to me that long. So let me end today's encouragement with a closing thought followed by a scripture and a prayer. 
the thought is, with everything that's going on today, and especially with the trials of the stay-at-home directive, we are being called upon to be patient. Patient in so many ways and towards so many things, including ourselves. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4 says, Consider it all joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance, patience. And perseverance, patience, must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Let's pray. Father, we ask for your strength and courage to be patient with the trials of this world, patient with one another, and patient with ourselves. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening and spending time with me. Have a glorious day.